Okay, so let's do these last six problems and finish up our lesson for Monday, April 6th, 6.3. So this next section, you'll notice, is very similar to what we just finished. The one difference is some of the radicals can be simplified before you separate them. For instance, if you look back at f from the previous, nothing was common, so we separated them. Here, nothing common besides 1, so we separated them. Nothing common between 108 and 125, so we separated the radicals. But if there is something common, like look here at b, we do need to simplify inside first, then we can separate. So that's the one key difference between what we did earlier and what we're going to do now is several of the problems can be simplified. What I want you to be aware of is this 2 and this 16 could never be simplified. This 2 is outside the radical. This 16 is under the radical. But because both of these are under the radical, I can simplify. So when they're one's out and one's under, you can't. When they're both under the radical, you can so let's look at this example. So they did exactly what we've been doing. They did a tree for 18, which is 9 times 2, and 9 is two threes and a 2. And remember, there's an imaginary time sign there. So those two threes came out as a single 3. So that leaves us with 8 times 3, and then radical 2 still underneath. Then I have a 3 in the denominator. That 3 divided by 3 is 1, so my answer is 8 radical 2. So 2 3's came out as a 3, 8 times 3, then we still have the 2 under the radical, the denominator's 3, but because this is division, 3 divided by 3 is 1, so my answer is 8 times 1, 8 radical 2. So pretty much the same thing we just did, except now we have to start looking for simplifying. So this one, 3 and 2x are outside, so there's nothing to simplify, so I need to break this down. So 16 is 4 times 4, which I can see is going to be 4 twos. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So I can rewrite this as 3. And instead of writing four separate twos, let's shorten our work and just write two to the fourth. That's the same thing, right? And then using the methods we talked about earlier, five is not divisible by four. So I need to break it up into x to the fourth and x to the first. And the reason I did that is because I need these exponents to be divisible. 4 is divisible by 4, but there was still one left over. 4 plus 1 is 5. What about 8? Is it divisible by 4? Yes, it is. So I can leave that y to the 8th. So I broke down 16 into 2 to the 4th using the tree x to the fifth, I broke up into x to the fourth, x to the first, so that that could come out. 8 was already divisible by 4, so I just left it. And then that 2x in the denominator, we can't do anything with that because it's outside the radical. So now we go into the problem, and anything that has groups of 4 will come out as a single. So that's going to come out as a 2. There's four x's, so that's going to come out as an x. There are eight y's. Eight divided by four means that's going to come out as y squared. And then remember what I said on the example problem? This is a time sign. So this is your new problem. Three times two times x times y squared, and then look under your radical. We still have one thing underneath there, so this would be the fourth root of x, and then it's over 2 times x. 
So four twos came out as a single two, four x's came out as a single x, eight divided by four, eight y's come out as two. We already had that three there, so we bring that down. And now just like the example above, if there's something common, you can cancel. Two divided by two, one. X divided by X, one. So I can see my answer now has ones in the denominator, so it's not going to be a fraction. It's just going to be 3y squared, 4th root, x. So 3y squared, 4th root, x. Well, not bad, right? Easier than the ones we just did. Okay, so this one's a tricky one, and you have one on your test like this, so this would be a good one to highlight. Where it can be simplified first, I think it's number... Uh, 12 on your practice test. Where it can be simplified first... So always look for that. If it's in parentheses, simplify. If they're both under the radical, simplify. And you see here how 120 and 4 have something in common. x to the 7th and x to the 4th have something in common. z to the 9th and z to the 2nd have something in common. So the negative stays. And then this is going to be cube root. And on your calculator, hopefully you know 4 goes into 120 30 times because 4 goes into 12 3 times and then add the 0. But if you don't know that, just divide it on your calculator. Or you could have made it 60 over 2 and then simplified it to 30 over 1. And then do you remember the exponent rules from earlier today? We subtract exponents, so this is going to be x cubed y to the 5th doesn't have anything to go with it, so it's going to stay y to the 5th. But z, there's a z up here and a z down there, so we subtract the exponents, 9 minus 2, and we get z to the 7th. So all we've done is simplify the fraction. We haven't done anything else. We still have to simplify the radical, but we just made our problem easier for us because now we don't have that fraction. Now we can just break it down. So now we need to do what we did over here, factor everything. So 30 is 6 times 5. Let's go over here. 30 is 6 times 5. 5 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. And then 6 breaks down to 2 and 3. And we're looking for triples. Are there any triples? No. So I can leave 30, 30, or I can write 2 times 3 times 5 and make it 30 in a bit. Whatever works for you. So most students would probably do this, and then you should go, oh, there aren't 3 of anything, so that's, those are all going to stay under there. X already has 3. So it's good. 3 is divisible by 3. Now 5 is not divisible by 3. So we could make it y to the 3rd and y to the 2nd because 3 plus 2 is 5. So I just start counting down until I get a number divisible by 3. 7 is not divisible by 3. Count down 6. Oh, 6 is... So I can write that as z to the 6. 6 plus 1 is 7, so that would be times z to the 1st. So that's what my new problem looks like, all expanded out. I made all my exponents divisible by 3 and then wrote the leftovers, divisible by 3, wrote the leftovers. Not a triple, not a triple, not a triple. This is a triple. This is a triple. That means that it's divisible by 3, and this is a triple. So I know my answer is going to be negative. 
and no numbers come out, so three x's come out as three divided by three, x to the first, three y's, three divided by three, y to the first, six divided by three, six z's come out as two z squared. So six divided by three z squared. Everything else has to stay in jail because there's not enough to come out. So write your cube root and go two times three is six times five. That's going to be 30. Then there's two y's there that can't make it out and a single z. And there you have it. Nice, huh? So the first three problems on your test look like that. Simplifying a radical. Okay, let's go over to the back page. And at any time, you can stop the video and work ahead and do your problems and see if you can get them right and then, check, then turn the video back on and check them. So I encourage you to do that because just copying, you're going to be crazy if you just copy, copy, copy. It would be a good idea to try and practice some first. So now would be a good time to stop the video and do the two at the top of the next page. So number C, or letter C and letter D. Okay, so like I said on the page previous, we're trying to look for anything common. 256 doesn't have anything common. X isn't down here. Y is not up there. Z is not up there. So that tells me to immediately break it into two separate radicals. So let's go ahead and do 256. 256 is 16 times 16. So that means it's four fourths, right? And I don't really need to break it into primes because the minute I see four of something, I can write that. So 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, times 4 is 256. So I can write this as 4 to the 4th, just based on this. Some students would keep on going and they'd write 2 to the 8th. You'll get the same answer. But the minute I saw 4 of something, I knew I could stop. x to the 8th, does everyone agree? 8's already divisible by 4, so I can leave that x to the 8th. In the denominator, y is already divisible by, 24 is already divisible by 4, so I can leave it 24. And 4 is already divisible by 4, so I can leave it. So now look at my problem. Every single exponent in my problem is now divisible by 4. So do you know what that tells me? I won't have a radical left because everything's going to come out divisible by 4, divisible by 4, divisible by 4, divisible by 4, because anything divisible by 4 comes out of the radical. So that leaves no radical left. So you can go right to the answer. 4 divided by 4 is 4 to the first. 8 divided by 4 is x squared. 24 divided by 4 is y to the 6th. 4 divided by 4 is z to the 1st. Done! You know, look and see if there's anything common. There's not. Everything's out of the radical, so we're done. So that problem looked a lot harder than it was. It was actually a very easy problem. And that was because all the exponents came out to be divisible by 4, which means we just divided the exponents, and everything was out of the radical. Okay, shall we do this last one, and then we'll jump to the Pythagorean theorem. It's kind of going to be a review of before break. So, remember, this is just times. So this is b over a squared times. And then the first thing I do is I look and say, does a to the 22nd and b to the 25th have anything in common? 
No. So that tells me to immediately break them into separate radicals. So I'm going to have the fifth root of something over the fifth root of something. So because this is the fifth root, that means I'm looking for powers of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So 22 is not divisible by 5, but I could make this 20. Yes, because 20 is divisible by 5. So I just started counting down in my head. I went 22, not divisible by 5. 21, not divisible by 5. 20, yes. And then that leaves 2 in the leftover pile, right? So 20 plus 2 is 22. Is 25 divided by 5? Divisible by 5? Yes, it is. So I can leave that b to the 25th just how it is because it already has an exponent divisible by 5. And this is another one that looks much more complicated than it really is. It's not too bad of a problem. So this leaves me, let's circle all of the perfects. So this one's perfect because it's divisible by 5. This one's perfect because it's divisible by 5. And can you all tell by looking there won't be a radical in the denominator anymore? Because once that comes out, that will leave nothing inside. So this turns into b over a squared times 20 divided by 5 is a to the fourth. That comes out because it's perfect. This has to stay under, so that'd be fifth root of a squared. And then in the denominator, 25 divided by 5, so that's going to come out as b to the fifth. So 25 divided by 5, b comes out and becomes 5. 20 divided by 5, a comes out and becomes 4, and then those two have to stay under. So now let's write our new problem. So now we have a to the fourth, b, times the fifth root of a squared in the numerator. My denominator is now going to be a squared b to the fifth. And we're never allowed to leave a's in the numerator and then the denominator because that's the quotient rule. So I'm going to show you a little trick. I think I showed you way back in chapter 4, but I'll refresh your memory. So when there's a's in both the numerator and denominator, and this is multiplication, you can cross out the smaller exponent and take that many away from the larger. So that means my numerator is now going to be a squared. And is it 4 minus 2, 2? And here, my smaller one's on the top, so I'm going to cross out b to the first and take 1 away. But I can see that means b stays in the denominator, so it's going to be 4. Because 1 minus 5 is negative 4, which moves it down. But rather than do that, just cross out the smaller one take that many away from the larger and it stays right where it is. So in the denominator will be b to the fourth. So cross out the smaller, take that many away. We had two a's left in the top. Cross out the smaller exponent, take one away. That leaves four b's in the denominator. And then we still have the radical, fifth root, a squared. So a squared, fifth root a squared over b to the fourth. So see, that one wasn't so bad, right? <laughs> yes, Miss Norris. Okay, so we're going to finish with something fun. We did these before break, so hopefully everybody remembers them. So anytime you have a right triangle, the first thing that should jump in your head is Pythagorean Theorem. And the second hint is you're finding the missing side of a right triangle. So just to refresh your memory, Pythagorean Theorem is a squared plus b 
squared equals c squared. So we can only use it when there's right angles, which there are. And do you all remember that we first have to find c? So draw a cross from the right angle, that means this one's c. So that means these are a and b, and it doesn't matter which one you call which, so I'll just do that. So this would be 6 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. So 36 plus 12 times 12 is 144 equals c squared. So let's flip it over. I like my letter on the left. Add those on your calculator and you get 180. 10, carry our 1, 7. I'm starting to get sleepy. Too many videos today. So let me just verify. 36 plus 144, 50. Oh, yikers. 36 plus 144 is 180. There we go. So, here's the difference between what we did in the last section and what we are doing now. Look at the directions. doesn't say go to your calculator. It says write your answer as a simplified radical. So, they don't want a decimal. They want the radical simplified. Well, we learned in the last chapter, or no, the beginning of this chapter, we don't want to know what c squared is. We want to know what c is so we can undo that square by taking the square root of each. So these undo each other because they're opposites, so we get c equals square root 180. And here's where this lesson comes into play. We need to simplify that. Well, we just found out from all the problems we did earlier, to simplify, you need to do a tree. So over here on the side, let's go ahead and factor 180. Seems like we already did it once today, but let's just keep going. So it's even. 2 goes into it 90 times. That one's even, so 2 goes into it 45 times. Now it's not even, so I'm going to try 3. Yep, 3 goes into it 15 times, and 3 goes into that. And those are both prime. And remember what I said, if you're not sure, if you don't feel like you're good at these, all you have to do is type all those numbers into your calculator. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5, and you should get 180 back. So it's really easy to check. 4 times 9 is 36 times 5. Bingo, 180, 36 times 5. So I just checked it. So here we go. C equals 2 twos, 2 threes, and a 5. And look what my index is. Remember how we learned this is an imaginary 2, so that means I need to circle groups of 2. 2 twos two threes, so those two twos come out as a two, those two threes come out as a three, and not enough to get out of jail. So what's my answer? Two times three, six, radical, oh, see I told you I'm getting tired, six, radical five. And Pythagorean have to have labels. So 6 radical 5 feet. So 2 times 3, 2 twos come out as a single 2, 2 threes come out as a single 3, 2 times 3 is 6, and then the 5 didn't have enough, so it stays underneath. And we can see from the picture that the hypotenuse is 6 radical 5 feet. Okay, so now's a good time to shut off the video and try B on your own. Okay, so we need to find C. 
draw a cross from the right triangle because that's the only important one. It doesn't matter which one you call A, which one you call B, but C has to be the hypotenuse. So we'll just call this one A, this one B. So A squared plus 7 squared equals 25 squared. When we plug into Pythagorean, let's go ahead and put Pythagorean right above it. So A we don't know. A squared plus B is 7. 7 squared equals 25. So we have A squared plus 49 equals, I believe that's 625, but let's go ahead and check 625. And then remember, when you're doing Pythagorean, you're just solving. So you're solving for A. So if I'm solving for A, that means I need to get it alone and move everything else to the other side. So subtract 49, subtract 49, because I'm moving it to the other side of the equation. And that leaves me with A squared equals, so 625 minus 49 is 576. And then keep in mind, what am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, I'm trying to find A. This is A squared. So how do I undo A squared? Square root, square root. So the square root of A squared is A equals and to do the square root of 576, let's see if it's perfect. Second square root, so we go do the x squared key, so second x squared gives me the square root 576. Ding, 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 what a great way to end the night. It's a perfect square, so it just comes out as 24. So A equals 24. If you would have done that with 180, because you're probably going, how'd she know to do that? Well, I recognize 576 was a perfect square. And if you would have tested 180 and went second square root 180, you would have seen it is not a perfect square. See how that's a decimal? But 7, 24, 25 is a Pythagorean triple. And then centimeters. So there we have it. The missing side is 24 centimeters. So after completing this lesson, now you can complete this section of Alex, 6-1 through 6-3. And you can also do number 1, number 2, and number 3 on your practice test, which are all simplifying radicals. Or you break them down into pairs or triples or whatever. That's it for today. One day down, 15 to go. <laughs> See you tomorrow.